Hey everyone, thanks again for tuning into Sims Workshop here on YouTube. Hope you're all having a wonderful day. Alright, so today we're going to be talking about This Is Not A Ghost Story by Andrea Portes. I have to say I loved it. Um, I completely blew through this book. I love Daffy. Her name is Daffodil. Her nickname is Daffy. I love her. She's great. Um, I think I really relate to her because she's like weird. She's such a weird character, but she's like weird in the best way. She's incredibly relatable. Let me just start with that. So this is not a ghost story. It follows Daffodil. She takes a job uh, babysitting a house, house sitting. Owners are going to be gone. They are renovating um, the beach house. So she has the house all to herself and this place is you know out midwest and it's where she's going to college and she needs the money you know for her first semester she she kind of needs that money so she is also eager to get away from everything you know something happened we don't know what we don't know exactly what happened to send her in the middle of nowhere, desperate to be alone to babysit this house. We have no idea. So it's a really good jumping off point. And I love the first chapter. She's just like, her voice is great. She's just like, yeah, this isn't a ghost story. Everything I'm telling you happened. It's a real thing. It's not just a story. I love her voice. Let me just, I know I already said that. I can't stress that enough because I think Daffodil is so great as a character. Um, I feel like this is going to be a short video because it wasn't a really long, it wasn't a long read and I think that was good. Um, it was reminiscent of Shirley Jackson for me because it wasn't like a short, short story, but it did have that tension. Um, just think you, I mean, this is a house haunting. It's a house haunting, basically. And I liked the house haunting story. Uh, I think I've read a bunch of books where it's a house haunting. I've seen a bunch of movies where it's a house haunting. No surprise, right? So I think it's a really good jumping off point for her to address the reader. Because you know what the tone of the story is going to be. Like, is this an unreliable narrative is this and you can already tell you know from the first chapter it's gonna be funny I mean the story itself is not funny haha but it's her tone it's her narrative it's how she's going through the sequence of events with us the reader with everything <laughs> that's what was key for me and that's it really why I love this story I, I blew through it like I said you know 280 pages no big deal it's a really fast read um, it's definitely something you want to read for October oh I didn't read the lottery this year my friend got me into that college she would read the lottery every year on Halloween and I didn't do it this year Oh, I'm disappointing in myself. I'm a huge Shirley Jackson fan, by the way. I have like two short story collections by her. Totally fan. But anyway, um, I, like I said, I love Daffodil. Um, I'm going to try to make this a short video because I feel like if I don't, I'm just going to fangirl about how much I love Daffodil. She's really relatable. She's quirky. She's weird. She has a good tone to her. She's really personable. You can relate to her as a reader. And that's what's key here. Being able to relate to her. And the fact that she's kind of going through the motions of what is happening makes it really interesting to read. Because you're seeing it through her perspective. And then... You know, it has the typical tropes, you know, hallucinations, hearing things in the middle of the night, that feeling, that eerie feeling. You're definitely not without the tropes here. Um, possessions, 
those tropes are there. But what sets this novel apart is the humor and the fact that the author is able to use these tropes, but not in a cliche manner. It's not predictable. They kind of do come out of nowhere. You are, you as the reader are left wondering what is real and what isn't real. So you're kind of in the same boat as Daffodil. You are questioning your reality. You're questioning this haunting and you want to kind of solve it at the same time. Now, uh, that being said, I thought it was really well done. Like I said, it does stray away from the, those cliches. is its own entity. And like, like I said, Daffodil's just a great character. She is. She is an amazing character. I love her so much. I relate to her. She's totally weird, just like me. I love everything about her. And I like how the author is able to insert humor with the characterization into the story. It doesn't break up the pacing, it kind of adds to the pacing and the tension because again, Daffodil is telling the story to us. We are hearing it, we are going through the motions alongside Daffy and I think that that's really good. Once again, it does question, make us question what's real, what isn't, and we are kind of sucked into that rising tension. As the story evolves, and moves forward and those um the hauntings become more and more extreme it really does create the perfect amount of tension to keep the reader engaged and you know alongside that you have the pacing the pacing is essential here it pacings are essential with any ghost story i think you have to have that proper pacing you don't want to bore the reader but here I think Portez nails it. She nails the pacing. Once again, it goes alongside the characterization and that narrative, that tone. I think, I don't think any one of these things, you know, tone, narrative, tension, pacing, I don't think one of them draw, makes the story compelling. I think it's how the author unifies all of them to create a very cohesive story and to create a very engaging story. It's not that often that you just kind of fall in love with a character and can completely relate to her. I mean, I know I did um, with Send Me Their Souls and Zarah. Love her. Um, but yeah, there are always characters that you like and admire and think are really cool, but I, for me personally, I guess, it's very hard for me to just fall in love with a character because I relate to them so much because I'm just so entertained and captivated by their tone and their narrative. Those are core for me as a reader. And when you have all of that together, you know, pacing is essential for me. I mean, I don't mind pacing when it gets drawing, as long as you have something else in the story to be really compelling. Here, everything is compelling. There, it, It's perfection. It really is. It is a perfectly written, not ghost story, ghost story. <laughs> um, and I was really drawn by the title. You know, this is not a ghost story. You think this is not a ghost story? So then what is it? This, this sounds like a ghost story. You know, I think you already have a hint of well, what the tone is going to be like with that opening with that just the title for me anyway but you know this was a really good book i was really entertained by it by it i really did love it like i said i think i read it in like two days and that's only because i have to put books down because i do have a one-year-old and i do also have a full-time job so i can't just it's not like quarantine where I was just like reading every every single moment that I was able to read and blogging every single moment that I was able to read. Right now it's like, um, when can I read? Scheduling reading time. When can I blog? Scheduling blogging time. So it's kind of tough um, <laughs> to get all of those things together. Um, so the fact that I read this book in two days 
and I just breezed through it was incredibly I would read on the car ride to work I was I didn't want to put it down and I love a good book that makes me eager to read it um I've been reading a lot of those lately thank goodness because it's been a it's been a rough year <laughs> I've read a bunch of books that I've simply not liked um so I love when I'm, I'm I love that I'm seemingly ending the year, I don't want to jinx it, on a high note. Um, you know, it's November, I got a whole other month, so thank goodness for that. Um, but yeah, I definitely recommend this book, definitely. Uh, the blurb does say that it is reminiscent of Daniel Vega's The, ha um, the Haunted. I definitely see that. I haven't finished The Haunted. I only had a chance to read the excerpt and I was just, I needed, I need to read it because that excerpt was really good and I love her book, uh, Survive the Night. That, that book, I should not have read that one at the end of the night. I do remember that. Um, and, uh, so yeah, I would have to agree with that statement. It is reminiscent of Daniel Vega. So if you're a huge Daniel Vega fan, definitely recommend this book. Um, that being said, this novel is really unique. It does have a strong voice to it. It's really relatable characterization. It is very well executed as far as ghost stories go. Um, so I give it five stars. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely worth it. At first, when I, I think when I first put the book down on my Bookly app, I gave it four stars. I think I'm going to go ahead and change that because it's definitely worth those five stars. Totally worth it. Loved it. Loved it. Loved it. Um, so on that note, I will include a link to purchase the book on bookshop.org. It will be in the description below. And if money's tight, which yeah, I get it. Um, please check out the book from your local library. And I hope you all will continue to support me here on YouTube by liking this video subscribing to my channel and sharing it with all your book loving friends. I hope you all have a great rest of your day and as always, happy reading! <laughs>